Hello, how are you? Today is Friday. Happy Friday, TGIF. I'm a big believer that it is very important to not only work in your business, but work on your business. So I wanted to just set aside 15 minutes. How hard is it? 15 minutes. I'm going to start the timer now to talk about goals for this year, 2024. And numbers. What numbers are we going to be able to achieve? Primarily the numbers that I want to focus in on for myself are two. My monthly sales goal and my listing goal. The number of listings I need to get in order to get to my monthly sales goal. If you watched last week's video, then you know I said my goal is to get to six <laughs> to eight thousand dollars in sales every month. And when I was running the numbers yesterday, last night, I had a sobering, you know, encounter with reality, <laughs> the reality of that. So let's just talk about that for a second. If I wanted to, with the current, with my current amount of listings, active listings, and I have about 1,400 something active listings on Poshmark and eBay, but I have a lot of duplicates. So I actually have about 1,900 items in my inventory. So with the amount of items that I have and my current sell-through rate, I would currently have to list every day in January 20, 20.66 20 items a day in order to hit 8,000. In order to hit 6,000, I have to list 12.33 items every day. I'm currently averaging probably a little less than five items. Then my goal is five items a day. But when I was plugging in the numbers, you know, for five items a day, it was actually really close to where I'm at, which was $4,240 a month. So it has occurred to me that I can no longer list just five items a day if I want to increase my monthly sales or there are a few other levers I could pull. So I could really try to increase my sell through rate, but I'd have to do that while keeping my average sales price the same, or I could try to increase my average sales price. Since the majority of my sales are coming from previously listed inventory, it's kind of hard to do that. I could of course increase my sell through rate by just running sales all the time and heavily discounting things, but that could only last so long and that would probably affect my average sales price which would change this equation. My average sales price right now is about $40, which is pretty good. So then I sat down and said, okay, <laughs> let's just temper our expectations a little bit and said, what if we just did $5,000 in sales a month? How many items do I need to list then? And that is a little over eight a day. So let's plug in if I did 10 a day, what that looks like. If I did 10 a day, my sales projections would be about 5,440. I think that's what I'm gonna go for, at least in the beginning, January. The thing is, if I do list a lot, if I list more items that I'm selling, then this number will like slowly increase anyway because I will have a larger, basically previously listed inventory base from which I'm selling from until eventually it will plateau. So, but I'm going to put my monthly sales goal at 5,500. I'm just rounding up here and I'm gonna list 10 per day. That is my goal. <laughs> That's twice what I'm currently doing. Okay, with the minute we have left, I just wanted to share with y'all how my 2023 was because I know some of y'all are interested. I'm not gonna do a full dedicated video to this, but just, it's not, we're not at the end, we're at December 22nd. So, you know, add a thousand to my sales. <laughs> That's probably where we're gonna be. I, right now, in total, my total sales, I made $82,801.93 in just revenue. My gross profit from that is $46,021.02. So I am no longer technically a six-figure reseller, not in sales, which is how I think it's typically defined, but definitely not in gross profit either. So for those of y'all who are annoyed with me saying that, <laughs> I can no longer say that, which I'm fine with. And if you are wondering why I'm fine with that, I'll link the 
death of my inner girl boss video on screen. My average profit margin over the year was 55.73%. My average sales price was $35.69. However, that is skewed due to whatnot, I think. On the months I don't do whatnot, it's like a, usually around 40. My average cost of goods this year was $6.42. I did a lot of bin sourcing this year, which was good. Poshmark made up the majority of my sales, like usual, but I am uh, would like to see that kind of shift a little bit, like I say every year. Poshmark, I made $56,377.65 in sales. eBay, $22,591.29, and Mercari, $2,420. Dollars. So Mercari, you know, my best month of Mercari, uh, that's not actually true. I was going to say it's this month, but no, actually, my best month on every platform was January. And I went over like the breakdown of why, of what happened each month in my life and business last video. So I won't get into that. My uh, average profit margin is really similar on almost all platforms. On Poshmark, it's 57.95%. On eBay, it's 57.54%. And on Mercari, it's 59.35%. And it's funny because on Mercari, I actually offer free shipping. <laughs> they just have the lowest fee structure. They don't have any promoted, you know, ad spend or anything like that. So that's why that's the highest. And eBay is just low, the lowest, because I do promote everything in my inventory over there. Not all of my sales come from prom promoted listings. I only do a flat 7%, but I do definitely have some promoted a good amount of promoted sales over there. Shipping can sometimes eat away at my uh, profit margin. And then of course cost of goods makes up the rest of that like, you know, differential because obviously if I didn't have to deal with the cost of goods and a shipping discount on Poshmark, it would be a 70 or 80% rather. So those are, you know, just some numbers from 2023. I don't know if y'all are interested. If you have any other questions about what 2023 looked like for me, let me know in the comments down below. Like my worst month, my best month, I did $15,870.43 in sales. My very worst month was $2,877.73 in sales. So with most months, you know, being between that. So, or I guess all other months being between that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good place to end here. I'm going to tentatively say that Tuesdays and Thursdays are my sourcing days. And that means Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I need to get my button gear, get to the office, and get to listing or photographing and doing whatever I need to do, which is what I need to do right now. So I've got to get my shipping done and I'll share with you what sold. And then I'll show you what I got at Goodwill this morning with Billy Lou, and we'll get that stuff photographed and inventoried. If we have more time, I have an hour and a half, then I did not take out those shoes yesterday that uh, I need to like unbox and photograph, so I can do that. Okay, let's go get work done. Everything that I have to ship today is actually from Poshmark. So I basically just have four sales, but then one of them is a bundle sale. So just a few things to grab. Okay, I got my clothing items and then I actually have one shoe. And actually, the shoe is going in the bundle, so I'm going to have to unbox it. Which some of you will ask, you know, this is the one, I guess, downside of storing your shoes like this. I mean, other than the fact that it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> but I uh, don't really mind. It, it, it doesn't happen, like, so frequently that I'm constantly removing the shoes from boxes. But, you know, I will probably move this into a larger box. And so me putting it in here is a somewhat waste of time. But it's fine. Actually, all this bundle, all three items, I listed pretty recently. So that's good. Let's head on over to the shipping table now and get these things shipped. And I'll tell you what's sold. The thing about these vlog videos is that I feel like I have, I show up here through the good, the bad, the ugly, and I'm gonna be honest, last night I stayed up until almost 1 a.m. <laughs> reading my book. I finished my book. I had to finish it. And so I'm a little bit, uh, 
tired today, so I have to go to bed early. Was it worth it? No. It was so such a sad ending. But I, you know, when you're like a hundred pages left, or I think I had like 150 pages left, or something, I was like, I have to finish it, and it was so good. It, I read the book. It's old or now. All the light we cannot see, you cannot see. All the light someone can't see. <laughs> Very beautiful book, a very s sad book. Uh, now I think there is a Netflix special. Maybe I will watch that, I don't know. My first sale that I'm shipping out is a dress, the population dress. I'm just, I was just going to go over it with a lint roller here because it is a black item. But I had recently dropped the price on this dress probably from like 100 something, 150 to 100, because I've had it for a while. And then when I sent out those 40% off offers, sent out $60 offers, someone countered a few days later with 58 without a shipping discount, which was essentially the same offer. I accepted it and that gave me a profit of $40.40, sold after 667 days. So happy, you know, I love formal wear. It does sometimes take a while to sell. Generally, it'd be nice if it didn't take that long. I probably just had it overpriced for a while. I'm happy to make 40 bucks profit, and I am happy to give this dress a new home. But now, the good part about finishing a book is you get to pick out a new book to read. So I get to enter the new year with a new book, which is exciting because yes, this is coming out like right after the first week of January, but I'm filming this right before Christmas, actually. Oh, it's going to Portland. It's not going too far. That's good. Let me grab a bag. Okie doke. Next is the bundle sale. So do I have, I actually might be able to fit everything in here. Let's see. Or, I, you know what? I might be able to fit it in here because these shoes are actually pretty small. So let's open her up. Let's actually, before we open her up, let's wrap up the other two items. So the two items in this, three items in this um, bundle, a pair of Vionic Pippa sandals, got these at the bins not too long ago, a pair of Free People Penny flare jeans, got these also at the bins uh, in my last trip, sold fast and this Callahan knit tank. I got all everything at Vince. So <laughs> the whole bundle was priced at 108 and they sent me a 50% off offer, which I just went ahead and accepted because I got these things at the bins and yeah, happy to get things moving. So the total bundle came out to $54 and I think some great pieces. This is so cute. I love all of these items and I hope they love them too. Okay, now let's see if I can fit it into here. Okay, so what was my total profit for those three items? It was $38.30, so that's not bad. Yeah, if I just take out this paper and instead of using paper as padding. <laughs> oh wait, I think I have two things of paper, so. Oops, I ripped this, oh well, that's okay. Here, maybe I will just tape up the rib a little bit. There we go, and then I actually will use a little bit of paper. Perfect! Where's my tape? So, actually prepackaging them still save me time. Take off my shoe label. Going to North Carolina. You know, I, there was a recent trend on Instagram that was like, all the states you've lived in and all the states that you've visited. I think I've visited a lot of states. The ones I haven't visited, surprisingly enough, are like the upper northeast. So like Maine, I really wanna to go to all those. But then I haven't been to North Carolina, I don't think. I've been to South Carolina, but I can't, I feel like I have been, but I can't think of a time I've actually been. I'm sure I've been. And then I haven't been to, what was the other one? New Mexico. So, and I actually didn't mark Wyoming, but I have been to Wyoming. But I've been to a lot of states. I think that is, growing up in the Midwest, you take a lot of road trips. And actually, <laughs> I saw a lot of states from, uh, Matt, you know, used to coach volleyball, club volleyball, and I would go with him. And you just go to a lot of tournaments throughout the country, so. Went to Indianapolis and Minneapolis and all kinds of places through that. Okay, so the next 
And I'd actually go sourcing. That was kind of fun. We would go to Minneapolis, you know, and I would drop him off for his tournament. I'd watch a little bit of it. And then I'd go to Goodwill. <laughs> okay, the next sale is another, I know I got the bins. It is a Prana Clay Cliffs tea. This sold for full price, which is nice. It's a men's piece. I do like selling Prana. And I had a profit of $18.99, so good for a Prana t-shirt. I'm very happy. It's really cute. Oh, it's also going to Oregon. You buy your inventory in Oregon, you sell it to Oregonians. Okay, this one's already packaged up, so I'm not even gonna bother with tissue paper, but it is something I have multiples of. And it is this, I think cashmere, 100% cashmere, or is it cashmere? Five, okay, no, it's only 5% cashmere. <laughs> it's a cotton cashmere blend. It's mainly cotton. Okay, so this is actually something I have many of. It's Adriana Goldschmied men's sweater. I have this in like almost every size, small or medium through extra, extra large. So if you want to get one for your man, it's really cute. It's got this intarsia uh, French phrase on it. La Nouvelle Vague. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> the new something. Vague. I don't know what that is in French. I kind of want to look it up. But it's new with tag, and this retails for $198. So I have them listed for $80. Okay, this was so not a smart idea. I have them listed for $80. And so I just actually today received an offer for $45 on this one, size large, and I accepted it. So oh, this is going to Washington. So we're just Pacific Northwest in it up. Let's look it up real quick before we go do real work. Uh, the new wave. It's probably vague, va, vague. La nouvelle vague. Yeah, la nouvelle vague. The new wave. Cool. Now I'm gonna hang up the stuff I got from this morning and we'll get it going. Okay, so I think I'm gonna time myself in this. Let me show you real quick what I got. Turn my steamer on while my steamer heats up. So, first, these pair of made well sandals in excellent condition they're eight they have some wear on the outer sole but they are eight and a half really really cute and those were 7.99 and then i found two reformation winslow dresses this is a good style this is an older tag but i recognized this style it's kind of got a kimono sleeve it's maxi length and it's a wrap style and so i'm excited to get those listed what size are those Lulu loved these. <laughs> she was like playing, like wrapping herself in them. Size medium. I'm assuming they're both medium, but I'll check. And then I found a new tag. And those are both $12.99, I think. Yeah. A new tag. City Chic uh, dress. City Chic honestly isn't doing that well for me. <laughs> so this is... If this one doesn't well, do well for me either, I might reevaluate picking it up but it was half off so it was $9.99 instead of $19.99 and then I of course went through the maternity section mainly for myself <laughs> but I found a pair of Madewell maternity jeans I love selling Madewell maternity jeans these are size 27 in excellent condition and I got them for $12.99 so we'll see how those do but I am I think I'm going to hold off on buying a lot of Madewell stuff in general. I think I've been, you know, I'm one of the last people who still love selling Madewell. But there are exceptions, like I, I'll still pick up the shoes for $7.99. And then I really do like selling maternity. And then there are other things, like some maxi dresses do really well and certain styles of jeans. But, you know, when I went to Crossroads last time and I picked up the plus size Madewell and the men's Madewell, I think I'm gonna hold off oh, on picking up those things, especially at Crossroads for a little while. I don't know. We'll see if I stick to that. But I think I'm just going to reevaluate my Madewell purchases. And I, I'd also be curious to see how this pair of jeans does too. Because Madewell maternity used to fly and now it sits for a little bit. So we'll see how long that one sits. This is also the Free People Dolman, quilted Dolman jacket. I got it Play-Dohs. If you watched my video, on Wednesday, my last video, then you know about this one. It had a little, not stain, but something, something on the jacket, like right next to the zipper. And I was able to get it off with just a wet wipe, so that's good. I don't really need to steam this that much. I was gonna tie myself, I forgot. Let's just be fast. 
The Reformation dresses are gonna take a second to steam, but they're worth it. Okay, so we've got six items to photograph and I'm going to therefore give myself 12 minutes to do it. Apparently the fancy word for this is time boxing. 12 minutes for photographing. Okay, the clock starts. Oh wait, do I have six? Yeah, wait, yeah. I'm putting one shoe. I'm gonna do the shoe last and then just leave the shoe set up there and then hopefully I will get to <laughs> my other shoes next time. I'm not gonna have time this time keep procrastinating it, but that's okay. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I didn't quite get it done in 12 minutes. In fact, I was just about to photograph my last item when the timer went off. So I sped through my last item. I got it done pretty quickly. And then I just tried out something else that I haven't been doing, especially with a few items like this. I measured everything first and then now I'm inventorying everything now. And I think that is the way to go. Basically it's the concept of, you know, Henry Ford's assembly line. Is that right? Is that the right concept? Okay, I think so. And everything's more efficient if you do the same thing over and over and over. So instead of breaking up, you know, my activities into, okay, now I'm measuring this, then I'm inventorying it, and then I'm measuring it, then I'm inventorying it. It is faster to just measure everything and then inventory everything. And so, but it just, I, I have to really think through my systems here when I have more than, you know, six items. But I think I can figure it out and I think that will actually help make me more efficient, which I'm gonna need, definitely need as many efficiencies as possible moving forward into our new big goals. I have a lot of things to chew on right now. I'm just a lot of things to think through and plan out and figure out, but I've been listening to a lot of planning, productivity, maximizing efficiency type of podcasts and YouTube videos. I'll, maybe I'll link down a couple. All right, so I got everything done and I now need to run to the post office. Thanks for joining me today, even though I was <laughs> kind of tired. Got a lot of stuff done, got, you know, what we needed to get done. And yeah, I really, again, love shooting these vlogs. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Actually, I'm really curious. What, if you don't mind sharing, what is your sales monthly sales goal for 2024? And how many listings do you think you need to do per day on average to get there? And then if you have any tips for efficiency, productivity, planning, projections, anything that you found useful, uh, if you wanna share them in the comments below, that'd be cool as well. Okay, I gotta run to the post office, but I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay, love y'all. Bye.